I want her locked up. I want her locked up now. Make out a complaint, I'll sign it. I didn't steal these clothes, Mr. Durbin. I swear, swear I... Swear on your mother's grave, I wouldn't believe you. She's just a little crook. Nice coat. $22.95. Only at her price, it's cheaper. Nothing. Where'd you ever see such nerve as hers? <laughs> Comes into my store wearing something she stole from I me. I didn't. You ran away. I, I didn't want to do that. I just got scared. We went over to her room, found these other things. They were presents. Yeah, to yourself. A boy gave them to me. What boy, Terry? What's his name? Frank. Frank who? I don't know. It was just Frank. I met him at a dance, and he started coming around to see me. Clearly. Am I going to stand around here all day? Go on, Terry. Well, Frank gave me these presents. I'm telling the truth. We're wasting time. Every one of these items, Cleary, every one is sold in my store. Now, look at this. The label torn out. What'd you do that for, eh? I didn't. I Where's the complaint? Just a second, Mr. Durbin. Complaints aren't signed here anyway. Terry, I'm going to ask you just one question, and I want you to answer me truthfully. It's important. So, don't lie to me. But Terry, did you steal these clothes from Mr. Durbin's department store? No, sir, I didn't. I swear I didn't. I can't charge her. Don't book her. She stole these. There's no proof of that. I can't arrest her. Not enough evidence. Well, if you let her go, she'll do it again. Durbin, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. I say you came here in good faith. You're police. You're supposed to protect. Case closed. Not with me, it isn't. I'm not someone who just walked in off the street. Clearly, I've been in this neighborhood for 30 years. I'm not through with this. You'll see I'm not. Mr. Cleary, can he do something? Don't worry about it, Terry. Go on home now. I'll have one of the boys bring this stuff over. Nice girl. Always has been. Durbin has been dropping bombs all over the place. First a letter to the commissioner, telephone calls, then he gives it to the papers. You want to take a look? I've seen. Got a rough break on this. Papers have been playing it up all week. Durbin is a neighborhood wheel. He makes enough noise, everybody listens. He's lucky I didn't belt him. Yeah, I know. I got it all from Ernie. The girl didn't do anything. If I'd uh, collared her with this, she would have been smeared all over the west side. A rap like this sticks. I'll see you later. Tom, we've got worse trouble. Your friend Durbin has filed a citizen's complaint against you. The department wants to charge you with failure to take proper police action. Me? Get sore, I don't blame you. But Durbin still filed a complaint. We have to handle it whether we like it or not. Roy, why do we waste time? Tell the commissioner the guy's a bum and wrap it up. Relax, will you? You think I like this assignment? I got news for you. I'm asking for a transfer. Until I move out, what do you want me to do? Tear up every complaint that comes in here? Okay, okay, who's bugging you? I know you got a job to do, but what do they expect me to do? I know the girl. She's all right. Sure, but you left yourself wide open on this. You shortcut the whole deal. You gave that girl a station house trial. Didn't even call in the DA's office and they're burning, too. Roy, I know an arrest when I see one. I can smell it. Innocent or guilty, I know. All right, stop knocking my head. I'm with you on this. I'm just trying to tell you how to beat it. There's nothing to beat. Tom, Roy, I don't always go by the book, I know. When you were in the squad room, neither did you. But I knew what I was doing with Durbin. Roy, the girl's innocent. All right. All right, then we'll prove it. I talked the commissioner into letting you turn in a report. The worst you can get is a reprimand. There's nothing to report. Look, do I have to draw you a picture? The commissioner needs something to satisfy the papers, to satisfy Durbin. Let him back up his cops instead. I hate to disillusion you, but we're in a shooting gallery here, and we've got to be nice boys. Tom, don't let them throw a departmental trial at you, because that's what they'll do. A reprimand or a trial, is that the choice? That's about it. Durbin is after your skin. Listen to me and we'll save it. Now, don't be thick about this. Nineteen years a cop and I have to take this? No. Take their reprimand.
All right. My orders are to hand you this complaint. As of now, you are officially on charges. You'll be notified when to appear for departmental trial. What happened? The system versus a good cop. And neither one of them will give. In my opinion, leaving a school crossing ought to be a felony charge. You realize that children could have been killed because you were off post? I know, sir. I'm sorry. I, I just didn't stop to think about it. You know, that pedestrian could have looked up the address in the phone book by himself. You didn't have to go in the store with him. Yes, sir. Kids don't walk, Officer Randall. They run. Now, some of them could have been at that crossing in a matter of seconds. This calls for a fine of 30 days' pay. And that's lenient. That's all. Mr. Reynolds. How are you, Lieutenant? Well, no better after Tom Cleary gets here. I understand the Police Benevolent Association assigned you as his counsel. I saw him last night. Mr. Reynolds, I've known him some time. He's a good cop. But I don't think he stands a chance in here. If you could get him to take a plea. Well, isn't he? Not yet. If he does take one, I'll talk to the trial commissioner. Officer Bender. He doesn't plead guilty. He's asking for trouble. A lot of it. That's why I asked you to talk to him. This is too valuable a man to lose. Officer Bender is present, sir. How does he plead? Guilty. Counselor, don't let him get hurt. It's a matter of policy that all members of this department conduct themselves in an exemplary manner. No matter what the provocation, when you're off duty, you'll remember that. All right. A reprimand will be entered in your official record. That's all. I've gone over your department record. It's a good one. I'm sure the commissioner will listen to a plea of leniency. Mr. Reynolds, I've told you I'm not guilty. This isn't your first day in the department. An official charge is bad enough, but this is a citizen's complaint. Newspapers watch it, and they expect action. They'll get it. I'm just going to tell them what happened. That isn't good enough. Who are you representing? Near the department. Now, let's understand one another. The PBA appointed me your counsel. I accept that responsibility. Whatever I advise is for you, for no one else. Then why do you tell me to cop a plea? Because it's your only chance. When you're on charges, there are reasons for them. If you draw this out into a trial, how do you know what else the prosecutor will bring up? A thing like this can get out of control. There'll be witnesses against you. None of them friendly. Mr. Randall. The plain truth is, you make it tough and you get the book. Maybe even dismissal. No pension. No more duty. Everything you've ever done for nothing. Make up your mind. Detective First Grade Cleary. Suspended in rank pending disposition of charges. Detective Cleary is present. Does he waive the reading of the charges? No, sir. Read the charges for the department, Mr. Lanier. Detective First Grade Cleary is herewith charged with failing to take proper police action in the performance of his duties. In that one, he failed to investigate thoroughly the complaint of Mr. Arthur Durbin. Two, that he failed to conduct himself in a proper and courteous manner. Three, that he did not refer the complaint to the desk officer before refusing to make the arrest. How does Detective Cleary plead? Not guilty. Not good enough, Ernie. 
Not good enough at all. Trial commissioner won't take your word either. That's my opinion. You know what's killing Cleary? Being so sure of himself. If we could just get him to lean a little, admit that he's not such a genius, that's what the commissioner wants. What, you mean to make him give in? No, 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 not that at all. You see, Cleary is sore because the department has done this to him. So he's gone blind on it. He's acting like a spoiled kid. You think he doesn't know how you decide a case that it's facts and not opinions? He feels pushed around. Well, we have to help in some way. Then he has to take the stand and show what kind of a cop he is. What kind of a man. How do we get him to do that? Hey, Tom. Hello, Winnie. I just wanted to uh, wish you luck. Yeah. Oh, you make it all right, huh? You got a 30-day guarantee? <laughs> I tell you this, kid. If they want to nail me this bad, they're going to have to work for it. The accused, Detective Cleary, is a professional, a trained, experienced officer. And so he condemns himself for the simple reason that he knows how to deal with a civilian complainant. Instead, he deliberately antagonized an important and respected member of the community. He deliberately set free a person that might have been guilty of a felony. The department will prove the guilt of the accused and leave proper punishment to the discretion of the commissioner. The department calls as its first witness, Arthur Durbin. Over here, please, sir. <clears throat> Place your left hand on the Bible, please. And raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Proceed, Mr. Lanier. According to the records of the 27th Precinct, Mr. Durbin, there was a burglary committed in your store just two months ago. Is that correct? It is. Have you seen any of the stolen items since? Yes, in the house of a girl named Terry McClure. Objection. The witness is volunteering information not asked for. Mr. Durbin has just saved me that trouble of asking the logical question. Let it stand. How did you discover the clothes were in Terry McClure's house, Mr. Durbin? Well, one of my neighbors told me. She came into the store and said that the girl was suddenly wearing all new clothes, including the same kind of coat. I had in the front window. I see. I hand you this coat marked Exhibit A. Is this the same one you found in Terry McClure's house? This is it. How can you identify it? Well, in a couple of ways. First of all, here's where my label gets sewn in. You can see it's torn out. Then I put uh, this mark inside the lining on all the coats I sell. Uh, what's the purpose of that mark? So I won't have people running in with a popular price coat they got downtown apologizing they lost the sales slip. When I'm not there, they can put it over on the girls working in the store. It's just a precaution, that's all. I see. Did you show this mark to Detective Cleary? He didn't give me a chance to do anything. All he kept saying was, I can't arrest her. There's not enough evidence. Are you sure Cleary said that? I can't arrest her. There's not enough evidence. I took the oath, didn't I? He said it all right. Call that cop, Brenner, who arrested her for me. He'll tell you. All Cleary did was to call me the crook and throw me out. That's a great police department, isn't it? The department isn't on trial here, Mr. Durbin. One man is. Let's keep it that way. Are you finished with the witness? No more questions. Will counsel reserve cross-examination until after the next witness? We reserve the right. Then the department calls Patrolman Ernest Brenner. Were you present in the squad room when Mr. Durbin made his complaint to Detective Cleary? Yes, sir. Did you hear 
Detective Cleary make the following statement to Mr. Durbin. I can't arrest her. There's not enough evidence. Well, officer? Answer, counsel officer. Yes, sir. That is the statement he made. It is. Your witness. Officer, the day Mr. Durbin asked you to arrest uh, Terry McClure, what was her reaction when she saw you? Well, she looked sort of uh, surprised. Would you say she was frightened? Objection. Question is not substantive. It asks for opinion, not facts. Sustained. Did she refuse to answer your questions? No, sir. About how many arrests have you made in your year as a policeman? About 70. You consider yourself a fair judge, then, of how a guilty person behaves? Objection! Counsel is again asking for opinion. I am trying to establish the basis for the defendant's action. The witness is a police officer with an excellent record. He was the first person to observe the girl. His testimony is vital. I'll overrule the objection, Mr. Reynolds, but uh, I'll entertain a later motion on this point, if the questions aren't more direct. Thank you, Commissioner. Officer, I will repeat the question. Do you consider yourself a fair judge of how a guilty person behaves? Yes, sir. Now, when you questioned Terry McClure as to how the clothing came to be in her possession, she denied stealing it, isn't that correct? Yes, sir. She said they were gifts. That's right. Did you believe the girl? Is she innocent? Objection! Let him answer. Is she innocent? I say yes. Talk to the boss about ideas. You got any? Not yet. I forget it. I'm on the stand in the morning. Flaming youth. They're just expressing themselves. Must be an epidemic. Cross. What's the charge? Breaking and entering. Caught him in the back of a liquor store. They set off the burglar alarm. Well, I've got Cleary's file all set up. It'll sound good in court. What's the matter? First time you've seen kids picked up? Hey, now where are you? the girl? She's the reason for the trial. This is Terry McClure. Well, this finishes Tom. It could. Well, what do you mean it could? Suppose the commissioner doesn't find out that she was picked up tonight. Well, you just told me he has to find out. You're going to testify tomorrow. You have to tell him about her. Why? This doesn't make her guilty of stealing from Durbin. This is another matter entirely. What do you mean you're not going to tell him? I don't know what I'm going to do. Now, wait a minute. I'm on Tom's side, you know, but I don't want you in a box either. Good night, I mean. They'll bust you. You don't tell the truth about this robbery tonight. That's important information for the commissioner. You can't withhold information. If they don't ask me about it, there's no reason to tell them. I'm not withholding, Ernie. This thing tonight has absolutely nothing to do with Tom's trial, nothing. Besides, it'll come through channels in a few days anyhow. 
The commissioner will know that. See you in court, Andy. Detective Cleary, are you familiar with the details of a holdup and killing that took place on December 16, 1951? Yes, I am. For the records, this was a case in which a man ended a taxi cab, held up the driver, and then shot and killed him. Is that correct? Yes, it is. After you apprehended the killer, he was tried, found guilty, and executed. Is that also correct? Yes. Tell this hearing, if you will, the name of the murderer. Tell us his name, please. McClure. Objection. The testimony is irrelevant and prejudicial to the accused. On the contrary, it establishes the exact reason why Detective Cleary committed the very offense with which he's charged. He has known Terry McClure since she was a child. The department appreciates his motive in trying to shield her, but it does not lessen the fact that he avoided his duty in freeing her. The answer will stand. Then the department has no more questions. Your witness. In view of the insinuation made by Mr. Lanier, there's only one question I can ask to take the clearing. The question is this. When you refused to arrest Terry McClure, was there any personal consideration involved in your decision? Detective Cleary, was any personal consideration involved? There must have been. Are you admitting that there was personal consideration? I didn't think so then, but, but now, after what I know about the girl, I, I guess it had to be that. What do you mean, what you know about her now? I received a telephone call last night from it, I learned that uh, Terry McClure had been picked up for burglary. Sir, one thing I always told myself, guilty or innocent, I, I knew. I guess I still believe it. But the girl fooled me because I wanted her to be telling the truth. I didn't want her to have any more trouble. Her father was enough. It got by me, that's all. Due of my client's testimony, I request that he be permitted to change his plea from one of not guilty to one of guilty. Is that your wish, Detective Cleary? Yes, sir. We submit there's no need for any further testimony. The accused will rise and face the bench. The department is well aware of the record you have made during your long and honorable service to the people of this city. The department also appreciates the motive you had in trying to help Terry McClure. But no man has the right to take justice into his own hands. It is the decision of this hearing that you be suspended for a period of 60 days, after which time you will be restored to duty and demoted to the rank of detective second grade. I declare this trial adjourned. Ernie? Tom said he got a phone call. Yeah. Well, you gave me the idea. Me? Yeah, you said all he needed was a chance to show what kind of a cop he really was. I gave it to him. 